Vid Henny 5 here, and I am going to get right into the point of this video. Remember these guys, Ed Schrock and his voice personal ad? What about Larry Craig and his wide stance? Ted Haggard's meth and uh, man ass. George Allen Reekers and his uh, rent boy scandal, lifting the luggage. What about Puerto Rican Senator Roberto Aranjo, who was documenting his weight loss? I personally wonder what his why he was bent over like that. Maybe he could take a cannon now, but he could hardly take a cucumber before, I don't know. But this was exposed to the media after pushing for a constitutional amendment banning marriage between gay and lesbian couples. And a local example from my area, or at least maybe the district over, Craigslist Chris Lee, who was looking for trans women to have sex with. Now we get to Ken Melman, a man who basically was successful in getting 11 states to put bans in their constitutions. And when you really think about it, this was the start of a backlash that would begin after the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court said that a statute prohibiting gay and lesbian couples from legally marrying was unconstitutional. In a 4-3 decision mostly known as Goodridge, Massachusetts became the first state to legalize the practice. Now, I started out with anti-gay Republicans who were caught in gay scandals, but Melman was quite different. Why don't we take a look at this video here? Directly underneath the 2004 strategy around the anti-gay uh, elements of the Bush campaign, you will find a cadre of gay people. The 2004 election was a very anti-gay, you know, it was, it was a party. And Ken Melman was like the MC. Lifestyle issues. Gay marriage. Mm -hmm. Is that an issue in this campaign? I think it's an issue in many races, obviously. It was hard because there wasn't the kind of evidence with Ken Melman that there was with other people, but it was relatively known. And nobody would even ask. A lot of the chiefs of staff, the people who really run the underpinnings of the Republican Party, are gay. I don't want to mention names, but I will okay. Friday night. But you will Friday night? Well, there's a couple of big people who I think everyone in Washington knows who run the Republican. You will name them. Well, I, I wouldn't be the first. <laughs> I'd get sued if I was the first, but, you know, Why? Ken Melman, okay, there's one I think people have talked about. I don't think he's denied it when he's been, well, people have suggested he doesn't say, I never I'm, not, I'm walking around in a bog. I never, with Ken Melman, I never heard that. But the question is, maybe you don't go to the same bathhouse would, I do, Larry. Why? I'd get sued if I was the first, but the question is, maybe you don't go to the same bathhouse why would, I do, Larry. Why would uh, someone who is gay take public anti-gay positions? Why would you, why would you do that? Because, Larry, hating yourself is the greatest love of all. Ken Melman was the guy that ran the campaign that was sending out these flyers, that was baiting people, that was, I mean, particularly in Ohio, you know, in all these battleground states where it was all about, you know, let's get people to vote for Bush by this gay thing, led by the gay guy, you know, and funded by the gay guy, and politically directed by the gay guy, you know? And I think people deserve to know. No one wanted to put Melman on blast or Mary Cheney, who basically exploited the gay community, made money off of those who bought whatever beer she was advertising, and she was mum when it came to Bush Jr.'s position on marriage and pushing for a constitutional amendment to prevent her from marrying her partner, Heather Poe. Now, most Republicans did think that the Doma would stand constitutional scrutiny. Now, there that may be the reason that it didn't pass at the time. However, many states from uh, passed these constitutional amendments starting in 1998 to the most recent one in 2011 with North Carolina. This very thing is Ken Melman's legacy. Using the gay issue to get possibly get more votes for anti-gay Republicans. Now, whether the amendments got more votes for and, and secured Bush a second, ter second term, especially in Ohio, is hotly debated. Gay people being pawns for an anti-gay agenda is nothing new. Joe Jervis had called Ken, Ken Melman a 21st century Roy Cohn.
Yet the difference between Melman and Roy Cohn is that Melman is trying to make up for the wide swath of discrimination that he took part in. In New York and New Hampshire, he lobbied Republicans to vote on the side of equality and raised money for Question 6 in Maryland, Referendum 71 in Washington, Question 1 in Maine, and to defeat Minnesota's marriage amendment. But in all this, I, ha I am kind of at an impasse because Melman was the darling of the Bush White House so much that Larry King lied, as in the uh, video before, edited out a portion of news where Bill Maher outed him. So don't take my word for it, you just saw the clip. There are people out there who voted for Mark Sanford, pictured here, saying that everyone deserves a second chance. But I wonder if Rick Santorum would have given Anthony Weiner the same advice that he gave Senator, and, uh, Senator John Ensign of Nevada. Now, John, Senator Ensign had an affair with a female staff or with a married female staffer. Rick Santorum said that he would tell Weiner to resign but he gave a heads up to Senator Ensign regarding a um, regarding ethics probing. So question, does Ken Melman deserve a second chance after leading the anti-gay charge? Am I the only one that's kind of stuck between fuck off and maybe you've proven yourself and maybe you should get a second chance? What do you think? What do you read of it? Should Melman at least be giving an apprehensive okay and a short pardon for the damage that he's done? Could the gay rights movement have accelerated if he had not been involved in all this charging across the nation for conservatism? A lot of times when these anti-gay marriage amendments and anti-gay um, uh, things are pushed, we see a lot of vitriol. We see a lot of people who are just saying, you know, that these those people shouldn't adopt, those people shouldn't do this or that. But then again, that kind of points to something even bigger. Who's going to oppose them now? And not only that, but that also brings many people together that would normally not come together in the first place. So should we also be giving Ken Melman a thank you? Or just simply say, well, maybe you've deserved your second chance, but I'm kind of apprehensive or, or maybe on the fence about it. Let me know what you think, YouTube.